Lillian Evelyn Mahler Gilbreth May 24, 1878, to January 2, 1972, was an American psychologist, industrial engineer, consultant, and educator who was an early pioneer in applying psychology to time and motion studies. She was described in the 1940s as a genius in the art of living. Gilbreth, one of the first female engineers to earn a Ph.D., is considered to be the first industrial, organizational psychologist. She and her husband, Frank Bunker Gilbreth, were efficiency experts who contributed to the study of industrial engineering, especially in the areas of motion study and human factors. Cheaper by the Dozen 1948, and Bells on Their Toes 1950, written by two of their children Ernestine and Frank Jr. tell the story of their family life and describe how time and motion studies were applied to the organization and daily activities of their large family. Both books were later made into feature films. Early life and education Lily Evelyn Mahler was born in Oakland, California, on May 24, 1878, to Annie Delger and William Mahler, a builder's supply merchant. She was the second of the family's eleven children. Both of her wealthy parents were of German descent. Educated at home until the age of nine, Mahler began formal schooling in the first grade at a public elementary school and was rapidly promoted through the grade levels. She was elected vice president of her senior class at Oakland High School and graduated with exemplary grades in May 1896. Mahler, who changed her name to Lillian during college, continued her education at the University of California, Berkeley, commuting by streetcar from her parents' Oakland home. She graduated from the university in 1900, earning a teaching certificate and a bachelor's degree in English literature, and was the school's first female commencement speaker at the university. Mahler enrolled at Columbia University, intending to pursue a master's degree in literature and to study with Brander Matthews, a well known writer and educator, but soon realized he did not allow women to study with him or attend his lectures. Following her exposure to Edward Thorndike's psychology courses, she turned to Thorndike in the study of psychology because he did accept female students. After Mahler became ill and returned home, she completed a master's degree in literature at the University of California, Berkeley, in 1902. The topic of her thesis was Ben Jonson's play Bartholomew Fair. Mahler began studies for a Ph.D. at the University of California, but took time off to travel in Europe in the spring of 1903. Following her marriage to Frank Bunker Gilbreth in 1904 and relocation to New York, she completed a dissertation for a doctorate from the University of California, Berkeley, in 1911, but was not awarded the degree due to her noncompliance with residency requirements for doctoral candidates. The dissertation was published as The Psychology of Management, The Function of the Mind in Determining, Teaching and Installing Methods of Least Waste in 1914. After the Gilbreths relocated their family to Providence, Rhode Island, Lillian enrolled at Brown University. She earned a Ph.D. in Applied Psychology in 1915, which made her the first of the pioneers of industrial management to have a doctorate. The topic of her dissertation was Efficient Teaching Methods and titled Some Aspects of Eliminating Waste in Teaching. Marriage and family Lillian Mahler met Frank Bunker Gilbreth in June 1903 in Boston, Massachusetts, en route to Europe with her chaperone, who was Frank's cousin. He had apprenticed in several building trades in the East and established a contracting business with offices in Boston, New York, and London. The couple married on October 19, 1904, in Oakland, California, and settled in New York. They later moved to Providence, Rhode Island, and eventually relocated their family to Montclair, New Jersey. After Frank unexpectedly died of a heart attack on June 14, 1924, Lillian never remarried, as planned. The Gilbreths became the parents of a large family that included 13 children, one died young in 1912, one was stillborn in 1915, and 11 of them lived to adulthood, all of whom married and provided Lillian with a total of 29 grandchildren. Their children were Ann M. Gilbreth, September 9, 1905 to February 16, 1987, age 81, married Robert E. Barney, three children: Peter, Frank, and Robert. Mary Elizabeth Gilbreth, December 13, 1906 to January 31, 1912, age 5, died of diphtheria. 
Ernestine Gilbreth April 5, 1908, to November 4, 2006, age 98, married Charles E. Carey, two children Charles E. Carey, Lillian Barley. Martha B. Gilbreth November 5, 1909, to November 15, 1968, age 59, married Richard E. Tallman, four children Janet, Blair, Mary, and Stephanie. Frank Bunker Gilbreth Jr. March 17, 1911 to February 18, 2001, age 89, married 1 Elizabeth Cawthon 1934 to 1954, her death 2 Mary Pringle Manigault 1955 to 2001, his death 3 children 1 from first marriage, Betsy 2 from second marriage, Rebecca, Dr. Edward Gilbreth William Gilbreth December 18, 1912 to April 14, 1990, age 77, married Jean Irvin, two children, Lillian and Bill. Lillian M. Gilbreth Jr., June 17, 1914 to June 23, 2001, age 87, married Donald Dodge Johnson, two children, Julia and Dodge. Infant girl Gilbreth, September 13, 1915 to September 13, 1915, stillborn. Frederick M. Gilbreth, August 17, 1916 to November 30, 2015, age 99, married Jesse Blair Tallman, three children: Susan Castler, Frank, and John. Daniel Bunker Gilbreth, September 17, 1917 to June 13, 2006, age 88, married Irene Jensen, three children: David Gilbreth, Danny Gilbreth, and Peggy. John M. Gilbreth, May 29, 1919 to December 25, 2002, age 83, married Dorothy Gervin, three children: Peter, James, and Deborah. Robert Mahler Gilbreth, July 4, 1920 to July 24, 2007, age 87, married Barbara Filer, two children: Anne Gilbreth Wilson, Roy D. Gilbreth. Jane Mahler Gilbreth, June 22, 1922 to January 10, 2006, age 83, married George Paul Hepps, two children, Lori and Paula. Topic: <laughs> Career. For more than 40 years, Gilbreth's career combined psychology with the study of scientific management and engineering. She also included her perspectives as a wife and mother in her research, writing, and consulting work. Gilbreth became a pioneer in what is now known as industrial and organizational psychology. She helped industrial engineers recognize the importance of the psychological dimensions of work. In addition, she became the first American engineer ever to create a synthesis of psychology and scientific management. Gilbreth introduced the concept of using psychology to study management at the Dartmouth College Conference on Scientific Management in 1911, in addition to jointly running Gilbreth, Incorporated, their business and engineering consulting firm. Lillian and Frank wrote numerous publications as sole authors, as well as co authoring multiple books and more than 50 papers on a variety of scientific topics. However, in their joint publications Lillian was not always named as a co-author, possibly due to publishers' concerns about a female writer. Although her credentials included a doctorate in psychology, she is less frequently credited in their joint publications than her husband, who did not attend college. The Gilbreths were certain that the revolutionary ideas of Frederick Winslow Taylor would be neither easy to implement nor sufficient, their implementation would require hard work by engineers and psychologists to make them successful. The Gilbreths also believed that scientific management as formulated by Taylor fell short when it came to managing the human element on the shop floor. The Gilbreths helped formulate a constructive critique of Taylorism, this critique had the support of other successful managers. <laughs> Time, motion, and fatigue study Gilbreth and her husband were equal partners in the engineering and management consulting firm of Gilbreth, Inc. She continued to lead the company for decades after his death in 1924. The Gilbreths, both pioneers in scientific management, were especially adept at performing time and motion studies. They named their methodology the Gilbreth System and used the slogan, The One Best Way to Do Work, to promote it. The Gilbreths also developed a new technique for their studies that used a motion picture camera to record work processes. These filmed observations enabled the Gilbreths to redesign machinery to better suit workers' movements to improve efficiency and reduce fatigue. Their research on fatigue study was a forerunner to ergonomics. 
In addition, the Gilbreths applied a human approach to scientific management to develop innovations in workplace efficiency, such as improved lighting and regular breaks, as well as ideas for workplace psychological well-being, such as suggestion boxes and free books. Topic domestic management and home economics Gilbreth collaborated with her husband until his death in 1924. Afterwards, she continued to research, write, and teach, in addition to consulting with businesses and manufacturers. She also participated in professional organizations such as the American Society of Mechanical Engineers until her own death nearly 50 years later in 1972. In addition, Gilbreth turned her attention to the home, despite her aversion to housework and the fact that she had long employed full-time household help. Her children once described her kitchen as a model of inefficiency. Due to discrimination within the engineering community, Gilbreth shifted her efforts toward research projects in the female friendly arena of domestic management and home economics. She applied the principles of scientific management to household tasks and sought to provide women with shorter, simpler, and easier ways of doing housework to enable them to seek paid employment outside the home. The Gilbreth children often took part in the experiments. In addition, Gilbreth was instrumental in the development of the modern kitchen, creating the work triangle and linear kitchen layouts that are often used today. She is also credited with the invention of the foot pedal trash can, adding shelves to the inside of refrigerator doors including the butter tray and egg keeper, and wall light switches, all now standard. Gilbreth filed numerous patents for her designs, including one to improve the electric can opener and another for a wastewater hose for washing machines. When Gilbreth was an industrial engineer working at General Electric, she interviewed over 4,000 women to design the proper height for stoves, sinks, and other kitchen fixtures as she worked on improving kitchen designs. After World War I, the Gilbreths did pioneering work within the rehabilitation of war veteran amputees. Lillian continued consulting with businesses and manufacturers after Frank's death. Her clients included Johnson and Johnson and Macy's, among others. In 1926, when Johnson & Johnson hired her as a consultant to do marketing research on sanitary napkins, Gilbreth and the firm benefited in three ways. First, Johnson & Johnson could use her training as a psychologist in the measurement and analysis of attitudes and opinions. Second, it could give her experience as an engineer specializing in the interaction between bodies and material objects. Third, her public image as a mother and a modern career woman could help the firm build consumer trust in its products. In addition to her work with Johnson & Johnson, Gilbreth was instrumental in the design of a desk in cooperation with IBM for display at the Chicago World's Fair in 1933. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer work and government service Gilbreth continued her private consulting practice while serving as a volunteer and an advisor to several government agencies and non-profit groups. In 1927 she became a charter member of the Altrusa Club of New York City, an organization for professional and business women started in 1917 for the purpose of providing community service. Gilbreth's government work began as a result of her longtime friendship with Herbert Hoover and his wife Lou Henry Hoover, both of whom she had known in California. Gilbreth had presided over the women's branch of the Engineers Hoover for President campaign. Lou Hoover urged Gilbreth to join the Girl Scouts as a consultant in 1929. She remained active in the organization for more than 20 years, becoming a member of its board of directors. During the Great Depression President Hoover appointed Gilbreth to the Organization on Unemployment Relief as head of the Share the Work program. In 1930, under the Hoover administration, she headed the women's section of the President's Emergency Committee for Employment and helped to gain the cooperation of women's groups for reducing unemployment. During World War II Gilbreth continued advising governmental groups and also provided expertise on education and labor issues especially women in the workforce for organizations such as the War Manpower Commission, the Office of War Information, and the U.S. Navy. In her later years, Gilbreth served on the Chemical Warfare Board and on Harry Truman's Civil Defense Advisory Council. During the Korean War she served on the Defense Advisory Committee on Women in the Services. Author and educator Gilbreth had a lifelong interest in teaching and education. 
As an undergraduate at the University of California, Berkeley, she took enough education courses to earn a teacher's certificate, and her doctoral dissertation at Brown University was on efficient teaching methods. While residing in Providence, Rhode Island, Gilbreth and her husband taught free, two week long summer schools in scientific management from 1913 to 1916. The Gilbreths also discussed teaching the Gilbreth system of time and motion study to members of industry, but it was not until after her husband's death in 1924 that she created a formal motion study course. Gilbreth presented this idea at the first Prague International Management Congress in Prague on July 1924. Her first course began in January 1925. Gilbreth's classes offered to prepare a member of an organization, who has adequate training both in scientific method and in plant problems, to take charge of motion study work in that organization." Coursework included laboratory projects and field trips to private firms to witness the application of scientific management. She ran a total of seven motion study courses out of her home in Montclair, New Jersey until 1930. To earn additional income to support her large family, Gilbreth delivered numerous addresses to business and industry gatherings, as well as on college and university campuses such as Harvard, Yale, Colgate, the University of Michigan, MIT, Stanford, and Purdue University. In 1925 she succeeded her husband as a visiting lecturer at Purdue, where he had been delivering annual lectures. In 1935 she became a professor of management at Purdue School of Mechanical Engineering, and the country's first female engineering professor. She was promoted to a full professor at Purdue in 1940. Gilbreth divided her time between Purdue's departments of industrial engineering, industrial psychology, home economics, and the dean's office, where she consulted on careers for women. In cooperation with Marvin Mundell, Gilbreth established and supervised a time and motion study laboratory at Purdue's School of Industrial Engineering. She also demonstrated how time and motion studies could be used in agricultural studies and later transferred motion study techniques to the Home Economics Department under the banner of Work Simplification. Gilbreth retired from Purdue's faculty in 1948. After Gilbreth's retirement from Purdue, she continued to travel and deliver lectures. She also taught at several other colleges and universities, and became head of the Newark College of Engineering in 1941. Gilbreth was appointed the Knapp Visiting Professor at the University of Wisconsin School of Engineering in 1955. She also taught at Bryn Mawr College and Rutgers University. In 1964, at the age of 86, Gilbreth became resident lecturer at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In 1968, when her health finally began to fail, Gilbreth retired from her active public life and eventually entered a nursing home. <laughs> Death and legacy Gilbreth died of a stroke on January 2, 1972, in Phoenix, Arizona at the age of 93. Her ashes were scattered at sea. Gilbreth was best known for her work as an industrial engineer and a pioneer in the field of management theory. Dubbed America's First Lady of Engineering, she brought her training in psychology to time and motion studies and demonstrated how companies and industries could improve their management techniques, efficiency, and productivity. Gilbreth's extensive research and writings on her own and in collaboration with her husband emphasized the human element in scientific management. Her expertise and major contribution to the field of scientific management was integrating the psychological and mental processes with the time and motion studies. She also helped make these types of studies widely accepted. In addition, Gilbreth was among the first to establish industrial engineering curricula in college and university engineering schools. Gilbreth's book, The Psychology of Management, 1914, was an early major work in the history of engineering thought and the first to combine psychology with elements of management theory. Major repositories of Gilbreth materials are at the Archives Center of the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., and at Purdue University Library, Archives and Special Collections, at West Lafayette, Indiana. Gilbreth also made contributions on behalf of women. Her pioneering work in industrial engineering influenced women in the field. In addition to her lectures on various engineering topics, she encouraged women to study industrial engineering and management. Purdue awarded its first Ph.D. in engineering to a woman in 1950, two years after Gilbreth retired from the university. Several engineering awards have been named in Gilbreth's honor. 
The National Academy of Engineering established the Lillian M. Gilbreth Lectureships in 2001 to recognize outstanding young American engineers. The highest honor bestowed by the Institute of Industrial Engineers is the Frank and Lillian Gilbreth Industrial Engineering Award for those who have distinguished themselves through contributions to the welfare of mankind in the field of industrial engineering." The Lillian M. Gilbreth Distinguished Professor Award at Purdue University is bestowed on a member of the Industrial Engineering Department. The Society of Women Engineers awards the Lillian Mahler Gilbreth Memorial Scholarship to female engineering undergraduates. Two of the Gilbreth children also paid tribute to their mother in books about their family life. Cheaper by the Dozen 1948, a bestseller by Gilbreth's son, Frank Jr., and daughter, Ernestine, was made into a motion picture in 1950 starring Myrna Loy as Lillian and Clifton Webb as Frank. The book's sequel, Bells on Their Toes 1950, also written by Frank Jr. and Ernestine, was made into a motion picture sequel in 1952. Frank Jr. also paid tribute to his mother in Time Out for Happiness 1972. Topic. Awards and honors Gilbreth received numerous awards and honors for her contributions. Gilbreth is the recipient of 23 honorary degrees from such schools as Rutgers University, Princeton University, Brown University, Smith College, and the University of Michigan. Her portrait hangs in the National Portrait Gallery. The Gilbreth Engineering Library at Purdue University is named in honor of Lillian and Frank Gilbreth. In 1921 Lillian Gilbreth was the second person to be named an honorary member of the American Society of Industrial Engineers. She joined the British Women's Engineering Society in 1924. Gilbreth was accepted to the membership of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers in 1926, becoming its second female member. In 1931 she received the first Gilbreth Medal, which was initiated in honor of her late husband. In 1941 the Purdue University Chapter of Mortar Board, a national honor society, named Gilbreth an honorary member. In 1944 the American Society of Mechanical Engineers awarded Gilbreth and her husband posthumously the Henry Lawrence Gantt Medal for their contributions to industrial engineering. In 1950 Gilbreth became the first honorary member of the newly created Society of Women Engineers. In 1951 she was awarded the Wallace Clark Award. The University of California's Alumni Association named Gilbreth the 1954 Alumna of the Year. In 1965 Gilbreth became the first woman elected to the National Academy of Engineering. In 1966 Gilbreth became the first woman to receive the Hoover Medal. She was made an honorary member of the British Women's Engineering Society in 1967. Gilbreth was a recipient of Gold Medal Award from the National Institute of Social Sciences. In 1984 the U.S. Postal Service issued a 40-cent Great American Series postage stamp in Gilbreth's honor. In 1995, Gilbreth was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Selected published works A Primer of Scientific Management 1912, co-authored with Frank B. Gilbreth The Psychology of Management, The Function of the Mind in Determining, Teaching and Installing Methods of Least Waste 1914. Motion Models 1915, with Frank B. Gilbreth Applied Motion Study, a collection of papers on the efficient method to industrial preparedness, 1917, with Frank B. Gilbreth. Fatigue Study, the elimination of humanity's greatest unnecessary waste, a first step in motion study, 1916, with Frank B. Gilbreth. Motion Study for the Handicapped, 1920, with Frank B. Gilbreth. The Quest of the One Best Way, a sketch of the life of Frank Bunker Gilbreth, 1925. The Homemaker and Her Job 1927. Living with Our Children 1928. Normal Lives for the Disabled 1948, with Edna Yost The Foreman in Manpower Management 1947, with Alice Rice Cook Management in the Home, Happier Living Through Saving Time and Energy 1954, with Orpha Mae Thomas and Eleanor Clymer As I Remember, An Autobiography 1998, published posthumously 
equals equals notes. <laughs>